knowing uh, knowing scripture is important. We need to know scripture so that we can live as Jesus has called us to live. Um, knowing the Ten Commandments doesn't make you a good person. Welcome to the Bible Study Discussion Podcast. My name is uh, Wayne Charles Rosinski, and I'm here with... I am Cindy Avignoni. I'm his mother-in-law. It's true. She is the mother of my daughter's mother. That, that math works out, right? I don't think so. You're not the mother of my daughter's mother? No, that would be my mother. No, my daughter's mother is Nicole. You're the mother of daughter my daughter's... Of, boy, I'm thinking my daughter's mother. No, your daughter's Sorry. mother would be... Yes, yeah. you're right. Okay. Well, I'm here with Cindy, the mother of my daughter's mother, my (laughs) mother-in-law. We are going to be reading through the book of James. It's much shorter than the last book that me and Josh did. Uh, Much. Matthew is much long. James is five chapters, um, but a lot packed into these five chapters. So I'm going to pray and then we'll get started. Sounds good. Heavenly Father, I love you. Thank you for your love and for your grace. God, thank you for the chance to read and study your word. Would you open our eyes to your truth that we may see what you want us to see? And God, that we may... Uh, Just be challenged and changed to live a life according to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. All right. We are reading from James 1, 1 through 8 in the complete Jewish Bible. So it's got got his name, Yaakov, instead of James, but I can say James. (laughs) From James, a slave of God, and from the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, to the 12 tribes in the diaspora, Shalom. Regard it as all joy, my brothers, when you face various kinds of temptations, for you know that the testing of your trust produces per- perseverance. But let perseverance do its complete work, so that you may be complete and whole, lacking in nothing. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in trust, doubting nothing. For the doubter is like a wave in the sea being tossed and driven by the wind. Indeed, that person should not think that he will receive anything from the Lord, because he is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. So yeah, yours yours says Jacob. Uh, Anytime we see James in the New Testament, it was Jacob, um, and we decided for it to be James. Um, And James, we don't know for sure who this James was, but most scholars believe that it's fairly likely this was Jesus' half-brother, uh, James, but there's nothing, uh, nothing for certain that tells us that's who it was. But lots of reasons to believe uh, James, uh, the brother of Jesus, becoming a leader in the Jewish church and all those things that he did. Um, there's not not a lot of other contenders. No, for it, James that would have been, even though it was a very common Jacob, a very common name, but very much so. But most historians also agree with the Bible scholars that mm-hmm. James was the half-brother of Jesus and probably the firstborn to Joseph and Mary, mm-hmm. which means that he was the closest to Jesus, mm. but he didn't believe that Jesus was was God, the Son of God, until after the resurrection. Right. So it must have been a weird household, for especially for James to grow up in. Mm-hmm. Having Jesus as his brother, you know, the whole thing when Jesus was 12 and stayed behind. I'm sure the whole family went to Jerusalem Mm -hmm. for the Passover, and Jesus stays behind for three days. And Jacob's probably like, or James is probably going like, huh? (laughs) I I don't get this. You're just my brother, but you're you're weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I... I imagine there's many times that brothers feel like their other brother can't get in trouble for anything. Um, and they always get in trouble. And, and, and James is like, like actually had that. Like <laughs> his, his older brother was perfect, not just to his parents, not in his imagination. <laughs> and although it says, the word does say that Jesus had to learn obedience mm-hmm. by going back and, and being submitting to his parents. Yep. So not that he was probably ever really disobedient, but he did have to learn exactly mm-hmm. how, to, how to be a human, too. Mm-hmm. Then James just has that wonderful line uh, that's wonderful to read when you're not going through trials, but consider it joy when you're <laughs> experiencing trials. Yeah. I wrote, um, stop. Whoa. No, dude. I'm done. Just, mm-hmm. I, ha- I have a love-hate relationship with the book of James. Mm-hmm. I love how practical he is. 
and I hate how practical he is because right. there's just, there's no, um, what's the word I want? There's no shadowing in James. Right. I mean, it's either you do this or you do this and, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And which is a really good thing, yeah. but a really hard thing. It, it makes it, um, there's parts of scripture that uh, can feel kind of vague and we can just, Maybe we're not obeying it completely, but maybe it's because we don't understand it. James will tell us that we have to hear and obey later. Like he doesn't, he doesn't give you a chance to be like, I'm not sure that I understood what he meant. <laughs> That's true. true. Like, like there's nuance to it. Yes, but like he just says to, yeah, consider joy when you face trials because they produce endurance. Uh, one of the uh, commentaries I read uh, pointed out that mechanics don't test scrap metal; they test cars that are going to face tough conditions. Um, that's very like true. Like that, that, that testing is, is necessary and it provides that endurance in our faith as we walk through it. And it's not fun necessarily to go through a test, but uh, generally uh, in my life, I can look back on times of testing and see uh, the fruit that came from what God was doing in that season. Sometimes we can see that. Not not always, right. um, but sometimes we can look back and see it. One of the things in... Um, in the Greek, one of the tra- or not translations definitions for it is heroic endurance. Hmm. Not just it's not just making it through, but right. it's it's making it through, like James says, with joy, mm-hmm. with faith, with trust. You know, how many times do we just get through it by this holding on with our fingernails? You know, right. and yet other times, if we make it through one. That comes back around again, as we know. It's never just one time that you go through mm-hmm. certain trials. Some of them are hopefully just once and never again. But mm-hmm. most of the time we go through the same thing. And as it peels back the onion and we learn a little bit more and a mm-hmm. little bit more, because we went through it once and we made it through it, we can trust God that we'll make it through the, ne- the next time too. Right. But it's a little bit harder. Like I can, I can look at things I'm going through now and think, like, like even five years ago, like I would not be doing nearly as well with the trials that I'm facing now as I am. But because I've walked through like this level of trial and this level of trial and these things um, that, uh, that some of the things I'm facing now, like when I look, I was like, that could be very overwhelming. And it's, it's whelming, but it's not <laughs> overwhelming because of the endurance that has been built up from walking, walking through the trials before. And I think part of it is it, we talk, talks a little later about maturity being being complete and mm-hmm. mature, and I think that some of the trials that we go through come because we're a little bit more mature. Mm-hmm. God allows us to go through certain things that He wouldn't have allowed us to go through twenty years ago, mm-hmm. ten years ago, five years ago. Because, right. like you said, we're we're not the same person we were. We were not the same people we were a year ago. Mm-hmm. We we are growing constantly. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And then he talks about, uh, in this section, asking for wisdom. What a great thing to ask for. Uh, One of my devotionals and prayers I do every morning includes asking for wisdom. Uh, I feel like I mean it most days. I feel like I say it because it's a routine other days. But um, definitely long times in my life where asking for wisdom wasn't a daily thing. And when I look back, I was like, that seems like a, uh, a missed opportunity to just ask for wisdom yeah, and I agree. at least pay attention for that. Like I probably won't pay attention the whole day, but like to at least pay attention for that part of the day as I start my day, um, looking to the Lord for wisdom, um, for the things I have ahead. And then, um, the university press biblical background commentary. Uh, one of my favorite commentaries to say the title of also some, I enjoy reading <laughs> it. it says in the, co- in the context of James asking for wisdom and faith means committing oneself to obey what God reveals. Um. Yeah, that's a really good definition. I think I, I have also learned in the last several years of learning to ask for wisdom every single day and sometimes several times during the day because mm-hmm. I don't have the wisdom to do it. And it says God gives that wisdom without finding fault, mm-hmm. without, without saying, you already asked me that. He doesn't do that. Right. Even if we ask three or four times a day, God, I need wisdom in this situation. Uh, God, I need a little more wisdom in this situation. He just gives it mm-hmm. generously. Yeah. Because God's a giver. 
One of the things that the, the next verse that when I was growing up, this was a really hard verse for me, mm-hmm. not doubting, because if you doubt, you're like a wave tossed on the sea. You're mm-hmm. unstable in all your ways. And I'm like, but I have doubts. Right. I, I, I doubt lots of different things. Mm-hmm. Reading this in context mm-hmm. is, is really important. That we're, It's not that we never have a doubt right. about anything. Mm-hmm. It's not to doubt that he's going to give us wisdom. Mm-hmm. Not, not that that he's never going to do anything for us, or that what I ask for, he, you know, do I doubt if he's going to give it? Well, sometimes I doubt whether it's in his will, mm-hmm. and that's a that's an okay doubt yeah. because the word says to pray in his will. Mm-hmm. Many things we pray for, we don't know yet mm-hmm. whether that's his will or not right, right at that moment. But we are not supposed to doubt that he will give us the wisdom mm-hmm. to get through what we need. Yeah. And I think that's really important. I think it is. I think a couple of things. I think if sometimes I can probably like feel like he might not have given me wisdom. My guess is that's me just not listening for the wisdom yeah. or not to like, I can ask for wisdom, but like I need to mean it and be ready to obey. Like that feels different than just asking. So I might ask, and not have wisdom, I feel like that's on me and not him. Right. I, I feel like this is a verse that that uh, intentionally or unintentionally has probably been used as a, a, a bludgeoning tool against, especially young people, as we, like, totally. you have to believe, you have to never doubt. And, like, there's there's places in the Gospels, I talked about the Shield of Faith a couple of weeks ago, the, the I do believe helped my unbelief, the, the Thomas doubting. Thomas was with Jesus, one of the twelve, and wasn't believing, and right, and That's and true. Jesus didn't condemn him. Jesus showed him what he needed to see. So this isn't a if you ever doubt anything, you're a bad Christian, right? Which I feel like it's probably been used that way, and people have been hurt with it that it way. Has. Just pulling that verse out of context, but yeah, when you ask for wisdom, trust that God will give you wisdom, um, and don't you know don't don't pray for God's wisdom and then do what you think is best, but like pray for wisdom and God will grant that wisdom. I agree. I do think that there's what it's saying farther down where it says he is double-minded and Mm -hmm. unstable in all his ways. It's talking about somebody that has a foot in the world and has a foot in Christianity that wants to be, oh, I want to be a Christian, but I want this too. Mm. And many of us are that way until we get a little more mature. Mm -hmm. You know, especially as teenagers, you're talking about young people. We're flipping back and forth. You've got hormones going on. You've got, you know, as younger, as in your 20s or 30s, you're getting married, you're raising a family. Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on. Mm -hmm. But it's really talking about a person that lives their whole life never really committing to to being a Christian, mm-hmm. um, it's, it reminds me of the parable of the talents uh, that, you know, what, what the one that buried it and hid it yep. when it says, even, you know, that, that will be taken away from you. Mm-hmm. If, if you just don't ever become mm-hmm. mature, don't ever continue learning in Jesus, mm-hmm. you're going to end up losing. Right. Indeed. Anything else before we move on? Well, I, I really like um, something... Uh, James study that I did with Beth Moore many years ago says, bring all that we are to all that he is and all that we need to all that he can give. Hmm. And I really think that that applies to wisdom, bringing all that we are at that moment Mm -hmm. for all that he can give, all the wisdom that he can give for that moment. And Mm -hmm. it's it's a continual thing. Mm -hmm. That's very good. That both Beth Moore lady, she's smart. (laughs) You know, some, there is something that I wanted to say really quick. Um, in Isaiah 33, 6, it's talking about this, unstable in all his ways, mm-hmm. that God will be the stability of your times, a wealth of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge, the fear of Adonai, which is his treasure. Hmm. So we do have that stability right. when we're asking for wisdom. Yeah. Well, I will read verses 9 to 18. Let the brother of humble circumstances boast in his exaltation. But let the rich boast in his humiliation, because he will pass away like a flower of the field. For the sun rises, and together with the scorching wind dries up the grass, its flower falls off, and its beautiful appearance perishes. In the same way, the rich person will wither away while pursuing his activities. 
Blessed is the one who endures trials, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. No one undergoing a trial should say, I am being tempted by God, since God is not tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desires. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, who does not change like shifting shadows by his own choice. He gave us birth by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Hmm. Yeah, that's really good. I think it's kind of interesting that he sticks in. One of the things uh, in Unger, Unger's... Um, commentaries, Mm -hmm. talks about James being very abrupt. It's kind of like Proverbs. It just jumps from one one thing to a different one. So, you know, it's talking about double-minded, unstable in all his ways. And then you're going from, huh, somebody who's rich and somebody who's poor. Mm -hmm. Let him be, you know, um, boast about his high position. And it just kind of is, okay, let's take a breath and Mm -hmm. (laughs) jump into this. I don't, unless you do, I don't really see a lot of that except maybe being content mm. where we are. Yeah, I, uh, just verse 9 uh, made me think of uh, Sermon on the Mount, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Mm. Um, and Jesus commands there to the upside down kingdom. Um, and then I was happy when a commentary that I was reading talked about how much James pulls from Matthew, and especially that Sermon on the Mount. I was like, hey, look, I noticed something that smart people noticed, <laughs> uh, which makes me feel smart. Um, and then when it talks about the rich, it says, well, wither away while pursuing his activities. Um, generally, to have uh, money and to make money, it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of hard work. And pursuing earthly riches above pursuing Christ leads to that uh, dry up and perishes. Um, and yeah, James will continue to talk about uh, widows, orphans, and poor. I think sometimes as the Western church uh we do good about thinking about Jesus, but um, Jesus spent a lot of time caring for marginalized people, and I think we don't often do a very good job of that in in many of our many of our churches. I think some of our churches do, I, I and a lot of people in churches do through other organizations, but uh, many churches I've seen don't just aren't intentional about caring for uh, vulnerable in their community. I think it's it's changed. You know, you look back over the centuries, the decades, mm-hmm. um, that I think before the 60s, when things really started changing for the churches, some good, some bad, mm-hmm. that they really did care a little bit more for the poor and the needy in the Western churches. Um, whereas, I agree with you, I think maybe we're getting back into it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think many of our churches, because we're getting so close to the end times, are realizing, hey, there's a lot more to this living the Christian life Mm -hmm. than just going to church and and believing in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I I think it's important um, where it talks about the rich person going about his business will fall away. I think what you said is really important, you know, making money and, and putting that before our walk with the Lord. Right. You know, there's nothing wrong with making money. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with with even Christians being wealthy, mm-hmm. uh, as long as you are putting Jesus first. Right. I think that's and that's really important. Yeah. The the intention of what you're pursuing there. Right. And then verse twelve, we get to receive the crown after we've endured the trials and tests, and then onto the the. Uh, God doesn't tempt us in that. that uh, I drew just a, a spiral with an arrow at the bottom of the person who was tempted and then drawn away by evil desires, it gives birth to sin, and it grows into death. How some, sometimes, how so often, I guess, is better than sometimes. Uh, so often, um, getting caught in sin starts really small, um, but uh, generally will uh, take us farther than we expected down that path uh, of one little decision leads to one slightly bigger decision, and and eventually we're like, how did I get to where I am? Um, yeah, I think it's important to know that the thoughts that come into our head, whether they're from our own life or whether the enemy throws them into our brain, mm-hmm. that thought is not sin. 
Right. That thought, and, and, and especially when you're younger, you think, oh, God, I, I, I'm just, I'm really screwing up because I'm, I can't stop thinking about this. Or, or, or you know, that thought w- was sin. Well, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's when, it is when you keep thinking about it. Mm-hmm. You start dwelling on it. I know that's a Christian, Christianese word, dwelling on it. It just means to, to sit on it, to keep, to keep thinking about it. To, that right. thought becomes more and more into, into my mind than almost anything else. It becomes a, and, and it's true w- with any type of sin, it's pleasant to think about those things sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's pleasant to dwell on, to uh, have daydreams about things that we shouldn't be thinking about. Mm-hmm. And that also comes with maturity, learning where to cut that off, learning as, as we get older, when the thought pops in our head, it's like, oops, nope, I'm not going to think about that. You put right. the thought out, and you put the window closed, and it's gone. Um, when we keep thinking about it, we end up, doing it mm-hmm. most of the time. Yeah. And that's where we really get into trouble. I think there's there's two different types it talks about. Um, it gives birth to death. There's a, there's a temporary death there because mm-hmm. we're separated from God. We're, God it, God's not separated from us, but we've separated ourselves right. from being in communion with Him when we continually think about that certain thing or we start doing that certain thing. Right. Um, and then eventually there is, there can be an eternal death if you continue on that path and never repent, hmm. never come back to the Lord. And I, I think that that happens too many times. Hmm. Um, or, or it happens for a good part of our life. We get stuck in something that right. we just don't give to God, that we just either we think... Oh, it's not important enough. Or, oh, I've gone too far down this road. He's not going to want to hear me anymore. He doesn't want to hear about it, Hmm. but he does. We need to remember that no matter where we are, if we've sinned, God wants us to come back to him. Mm -hmm. He wants us to just, just listen to him, just build up that relationship again. If I have said something to you that's offended you and we don't speak to each other for the next 20 years, there's a death there. Mm-hmm. But if one of us can go to the other and say, hey, I screwed up, I want to be back with you again, and chances are we'll go, um, what happened? I don't remember. Right. <laughs> but there's restoration. Right. There is, there's family again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a, in, a, in a group that I'm uh, walking through, we read uh, the parable of the prodigal son, uh, something all of us in the group had read multiple times, um, uh, but a group of four dudes and like uh, three of them had things that uh, really got them thinking that they never thought through before. Uh, but for me, it just stood out that they, the father representing God, um, like he doesn't just like it would have been incredibly generous for the father to let his son come home and have a place to live and a pair of clean clothes. Like, that was beyond generous for what that, that son had that done. That's true. And the father did so far beyond that. He ran out to meet him. He got the best rope, killed a fat and calf, and threw a party. <laughs> and like, That's so, amazing. <laughs> like, that, that, however, wherever we are on this, this spiral of uh, temptation and sin and evil desire and death, that there's always a place to turn and that uh, God is waiting for us with open arms in that. Hallelujah. Verse 16, what talks about don't delude or don't deceive yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, it, sometimes we'll say, eh, it's okay just this once. Mm-hmm. I can think about that just this once. It, w- it won't hurt anything. Well, mm-hmm. that is deceiving ourselves. Yep. Yep. Or that it won't, it won't go past this. Like, this is where my line of, like, I know that this is wrong, but this is where my line of wrong is. Exactly. And I'll keep my line here. That, that line <laughs> tends to move. Like, maybe maybe for a month the line stays here. It's like, well, this is kind of bad, but not really bad. But, like, after a month we need a little bit more bad and uh, just... It multiplies. Continue. Yep. Yeah, it does. Anything else before verse 19? Uh, no, just in verse 18, that... He gave birth to us through the Word. The mm-hmm. Word is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Gave birth. To, we are the first fruits. Jesus was the first fruit, right. and then we are the first fruits of eternity. Mm-hmm. All right, verses nineteen to twenty-seven. Therefore, my brothers, let every person be quick to listen, but slow to speak, 
slow to get angry, for a person's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. So rid yourselves of all vulgarity and obvious evil, and receive meekly the word implanted in you that can save your lives. Don't deceive yourselves by only hearing what the word says, but do it. For whoever hears the word but doesn't do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror, who looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what he looks like. But if a person looks closely into the perfect Torah, the law, which gives freedom and continues, becoming not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work it requires, then he will be blessed in all he does. Anyone who thinks he is religiously observant but does not control his tongue is deceiving himself, and his observance counts for nothing. The religious observance that God the Father considers pure and faultless is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being contaminated by the world. Hmm. The first thing that I think of in verse 19 to 20 is, ouch. Right? (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's so hard. (laughs) Let every person be quick to listen, slow to speak. Slow to get angry. I have such, that is something I have a problem with. I do, mm. I tend to interrupt people because I'm, it's, it's not because I think I'm better. It's just that if I don't say it, I'm going to forget it. Right. <laughs> but I, I tend to not be quick to listen. I, I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I'm still learning right. so much. The older I get, the more I know that I don't know. A person's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. I'm Mm. always having to go, oh, God, forgive me. Oh, God, forgive me for that word. Oh, God, forgive me for saying. And that goes into the tongue. Right. Over the tongue. We get to more in the tongue and later in James, too. And I feel like I should just explain. I was nodding because I was listening, not because I think you're an angry person. You talked about you're angry. I'm like... It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. A yeah. Yeah. It, it was. A, it was just a listening nod. But he has seen it. Sometimes. It was sometimes. just a listening nod. Um, I think this is obviously very true in our personal lives. Being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. That, um, it just makes you a better person to be around. This is like, true. We all like to be listened to. Um, then uh, it is. It is a year where we will be voting on our elected officials. Oh my. Um, which is just fun for everybody. <laughs> if you're an American and above 18, we get to vote. And there's a privilege, and sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Um, but if... Um, uh, I, I wrote down from a commentary regime, a violent acts and speech don't bring righteousness, uh, don't bring God's righteousness. And we, I think sometimes, even as believers, look to our political leaders to to fight for us, and that uh, politics matters, the policies that they put forth matter, um, but ultimately, we are uh, aliens. We are... Very true. This is this is not our home. Like, uh, the United States of America, su- America succeeding as a nation is not my highest priority as a follower of Christ. Living for Christ and becoming like Him is... Um, so as, as we communicate in this year where we, uh, see division and it feels like, uh, from the bit of news that I take in, um, it's just easier to be like all the way on the left or all the way on the right. (laughs) And it's hard, um, it's hard to be thoughtful and somewhere in the middle for, for anybody. I, I follow on TikTok representative Jackson. I don't know where he's from. I think he's a Democrat. It doesn't matter. He never talks about that. Uh, but he just like, his videos are great because he just calmly explains what's happening in Congress. And he's a congressman. And he talks about how, like, the people that are yelling and screaming when the cameras turn off, they aren't. Like, they do that to be loud and to get attention and right. to get votes. This is true. Um, but as we follow Christ, both for us personally and as we engage with uh, the politics of our country, that uh, the violent speech and violent acts doesn't produce God's righteousness. Right. Is important to remember. I, and I think if if those of us as Christians, if each one of us will try our best to listen to what God says, to 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 be growing in Christ, then ultimately that would help our country. Mm. Uh, whatever God's plans are for our country, the right. Word says that all our elected officials are put there by Him. 
So we don't know what his ultimate plans are mm -hmm. for the United States. We don't know what his, we know what his ultimate plans are for the whole world, yes. Right. But at this moment in time, we do not know. So there's, mm -hmm. not, there's no point in worrying about where our country is going. What we should be not worrying about but concerned about is our own walk with Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. And in 21, you know, it, it's another Christian thing, put off and put on. Rid right. yourself. Mm. Rid yourself. It doesn't say that somebody else is going to get rid of my vulgarity and obvious evil. Right. Or e even my words that I s may say wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, I'm, if I say a cuss word, if I say something mean to somebody, that is under my control. Right. And I'm the only one that can make that better or make that worse. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody can come to me and says, you know, you got a potty mouth. You really need to stop cussing. Um, they can't make me stop. Right. They can't make me start. Mm -hmm. Only I have control. Only each one of us has control mm -hmm. over what we say, over what we think, right. and over what we do. Yep, yep. And then verse 22, be doers of the word, not merely hearers. Again, the University Press Biblical Background Commentary. Uh, it pointed out that hearing without obeying indicated self-delusion. That we, yeah, knowing, uh, knowing Scripture is important. We need to know Scripture so that we can live as Jesus has called us to live. Um, knowing the Ten Commandments doesn't make you a good person. No. Doesn't make you a holy person. Doesn't make you a righteous person. Um, but uh, that um, knowing and and doing, and we're not earning our salvation. No. That's that's that gift from God. But because of that gift from God, we continue to, um, we should continue to try and grow and become more and more like Jesus, which is uh, hearing and doing. Which is what James says later: faith without works is dead. The works, you're right. Mm -hmm. The works can't get us saved. But we do have to do the works after we're saved. Mm -hmm. If we just say, I believe in Jesus and I'm saved and the rest of my life not do anything, right. am that I really us, saved? That makes us double-minded and toss hither and thither by the waves. You're right. Also, I said hither and thither, hither so and that's thither. fine. <laughs> but yeah, it requires uh, doing the, in the Shema in Deuteronomy, that the word Shema, the listen, um, like from some of the things I read, like they didn't have... Like that, that word listen was a listen and obey. Like they didn't have a word that just meant to hear. Like if you were hearing, it was to hear and, and obey hmm. the, what you're hearing, like to put it into practice. Um, not just to be like, oh, I heard that. Um, Cause you know, my, sometimes my kids, they, they hear me ask them to do something and, and then they don't do it. I don't know if your kids ever did that. Oh, no. No, no, okay. no, no. But sometimes my, my kids aren't as perfect as mm, yours were. My kids were absolutely perfect. I, at least one of them was. <laughs> Just, Justin's yeah. a good dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that, that listen and do, and that, that word, that word listen implies that uh, listen and then put that instruction into practice. And I think that comes with asking for wisdom mm -hmm. and doing that. And I think that can, that can be an onerous thing, a hard thing on us, too. We can think, oh, God, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And we can be so hard on ourselves sometimes. But it goes on to say we will be blessed mm -hmm. in what we do. If mm -hmm. we, we ask for wisdom to say, God, help me stop doing this. Help me to, again, saying, I'm just going with cussing, to right. help me to not only stop saying the words, but to stop thinking them. Mm -hmm. What is, and then going even farther, God, give me the wisdom to understand why am I doing this? Why am I, f it's frustration right. that leads to that. Yeah, why why am I hard? frustrated mm -hmm. with this? I tend to get frustrated more with inanimate objects. I don't know why I do. And when I do cuss, which I have to repent of, it's because I've dropped an earring three or four times or because I try to do something and it, I don't as get as frustrated with people, mm -hmm. thank God, mm -hmm. as I do with inanimate objects. I think we just, each one of us has our own thing. Right. But when we're able to get to the root cause of that, mm -hmm. and that's the wisdom of God, right. wisdom and knowledge, the knowledge of why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to talk to somebody about it, right. say, I don't understand why I'm so frustrated all the time. You know, maybe if, if we go to Pastor Josh and say, I'm really, this is bugging me. He can pray about it if, if God's, if we can't hear what God's giving us, because sometimes we can't. Right. Our minds just get so clouded with 
how bad I am, hmm. that we can't hear God's wisdom and His love that He gives generously. Right. Sometimes mm-hmm. we need to go to somebody else to help us through that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And James finishes here with uh, a couple things about being re- uh, about true religion, controlling our tongue, and caring for orphans and widows in their distress, and keeping yourself unstained from the world. I think uh, sometimes when we talk about controlling the tongue, and we'll talk more about the tongue later, uh, set it set on fire by hell itself. Um, we, we stop at the words and we don't uh, go deeper to the heart exactly. of it. So I'm sure we'll talk about that more later in James. But then, yeah, this call to control tongues, keep ourselves unstained, and to look after um, the vulnerable is the end of what we call chapter one. James didn't call it chapter one. <laughs> it was just all one letter. I, I find it funny. I mean, we think of, of charity, mm-hmm. helping the widows and orbits is one thing. Controlling the tongue... And keep keeping ourselves uncontaminated from the world as something totally different. Right. But he puts it together as the same thing. Yeah. I mean, because this is his paragraph. Like, our verse numbers didn't put those two. Like, this is his last paragraph here, and this is a paragraph, a, a thought, and, and those, yeah, four things and a couple of sentences are, <laughs> are linked, linked together. Uh, did you have a, a big idea from James chapter 1? Well, I think it sums it down in two words. Do it. Do it. Do what it says. And it's very good for me. I think uh, the reminder of of asking for wisdom and and in that trusting God's character, God's goodness and God's faithfulness, knowing that if I ask for wisdom and listen for wisdom um, and be willing to do what I hear Mm -hmm. God calling me to do when he uh, reveals that wisdom, but that he is always faithful in his part of that. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a question from the cube? Maybe. <laughs> I can't reach them as easy as I used to could. We're in a we're in a new space. Um, technically, I think we're in a church basement. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a daylight technical. basement, but uh, we are <laughs> like ground level is up here on this side. So, um, at uh, fourteen oh five Bertram, if you ever want to stop by and harass us, that's where we are. But <laughs> you don't know when we record. All right, I'll pick a question. I'll let you pick a question, and I'll let you pick if you want to ask first or answer first. Uh, you can answer first. I'll, I'll answer, answer first. first. All right, okay. I'm ready. <laughs> this is an easy one for you. Oh, good. Which fabulously impractical car would you like to own? Uh, 1969 Dodge Charger is one of them. Uh, there, there's many, really. <laughs> I also want, uh, in the 60s, Jeep made a truck that was like a real big truck. Oh, I yeah. had one. I drove I one. Uh, for a little while, but um, like the brakes didn't work very well, and like the bed was rusted out, and part of the floorboard was oh, rusting no. out, and my mom didn't think that was a very safe. She was right, yeah. but my mom didn't think that was a very safe vehicle, so that went back to grandpa's house. Um, so there's that one. Um, yeah, and then uh, a jacked up Jeep. Those aren't wildly impractical, Cole, but uh, most people just drive those on the pavement, which that's not what it's made for. But um, so yeah, those are those are my three uh, impractical. <laughs> cars that I would like to own. Uh, a question for you. Are you mentally or physically tougher? I think I'm v- mentally tougher. This, you know, Especially going through all of this, especially as I get older, I find I can't do the things that I used to be able to do even in my 30s and 40s. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely not nearly as tough as I used to be physically. But mentally, I'm getting tougher. Good. Awesome. Uh, Well, thank you guys so much for hanging with us as we went through the first chapter of the book of James or Jacob. We will say both throughout it. Uh, Please don't be confused. I'm probably confused. Um, So if you like this, please uh, feel free to hit the like button. Feel free to share it with somebody you think might enjoy it. Uh, Leave us a comment. uh, Answer one of those questions. Tell us about your wildly impractical car that you would like to have. And we will see you later, alligator. Alligator.